Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll explore the fascinating world of structural analysis. We'll delve into the concepts of statically determinate and statically indeterminate structures, their characteristics, and the analysis methods involved. So, let's jump right in. To begin our exploration, let's understand what makes a structure statically determinate. Statically determinate structures have just enough members and supports to carry the applied loads. If any member or support is removed, the structure will collapse. Examples of such structures include the simply supported beam and the cantilever beam, which require a minimum of free reaction forces from their supports to remain stable. By employing the equations of equilibrium, such as the sum of horizontal forces, the sum of vertical forces, and the sum of moments, we can analyze statically determinate structures. These equations assist us in evaluating the reaction forces, distributing forces among different components, and determining the bending moments present in each member of the structure. Moving on to more complex structures, let's explore statically indeterminate structures. Unlike their determinate counterparts, these structures have extra members or supports, introducing redundancies. Analyzing such structures used to be done manually in the past, but with the increasing number of redundancies, these methods became burdensome and relied on simplifying assumptions. Fortunately, modern computer-based methods have revolutionized the analysis process, eliminating the need for such assumptions. Now, let's delve into some commonly occurring statically indeterminate structures and their unique characteristics. First, we have the propped cantilever beam. It features a simple support at the end, adding one redundancy to the structure. Another example is the continuous beam, which has additional supports, resulting in two redundancies. Even slight settlements of these supports can alter the distribution of bending moments and shear forces. We also encounter the two-pinned portal structure, often found in factories, warehouses, and supermarkets. Compared to the three-pinned determinate version, this structure requires less steel, making it more economical. Another interesting design is the Virendil girder bridge. Unlike a pin-jointed frame, it derives its strength from the stiffness of its members and the rigidity of its joints. This highly redundant structure provides unique design opportunities. Additionally, we explore curved shell structures, such as the iconic football stadium roof shown. Analyzing these complex structures often requires the application of the finite element method, a powerful computer technique. Now let's discuss the analysis of indeterminate structures in more detail. Many textbooks provide standard cases that help determine the distribution of bending moments and shear forces in these structures. Take a look at the figures shown, which illustrate some examples of simple indeterminate beams. Whether it's a propped cantilever beam with a uniformly distributed load or a beam with a central point load, these cases provide insights into bending moment diagrams and support reactions. Remember, uniformly distributed loads often result in curved bending moment diagrams, while point loads produce straight lines. These fundamental rules persist even in indeterminate structures. To understand the analysis of an indeterminate structure and the impact of settlement, let's focus on a specific example the propped cantilever structure shown. It has only one redundancy, making it relatively simpler to analyze. By employing simple equilibrium equations, we can determine the end support reaction. Assuming a given support moment of the product of the distributed load W and the square of the beam length L divided by eight, we can solve the equation of moments about the fixed support to determine the end support reaction RB. The calculated value for RB is found to be 3 times the product of the distributed load W and the beam length L divided by 8. Vertical equilibrium helps us determine the reaction at the fixed support. However, settlement can significantly affect the behavior of the propped cantilever structure. 
If the propped N settles, RB decreases, leading to an increase in the reaction of point A to maintain vertical equilibrium. Simultaneously, the bending moment at the fixed end A increases. Continued settlement can transform the structure into a simple determinate cantilever. Conversely, if the fixed support settles relative to the propped end, opposite changes occur. These settlement effects highlight the importance of understanding the behavior of indeterminate structures and their response to external influences. Now, let's apply our knowledge to a specific design requirement. A propped cantilever beam with a span of 5.5 meters and a design load in the form of a point load at mid-span, measuring 750 kilonewtons. To determine the dimensions of a suitable mild steel beam, we need to calculate the maximum bending moment at the fixed support. By plugging in the values, we find the maximum bending moment to be 773.4 kilonewton meters. Next, considering the yield stress of mild steel, which is 275 megapascals, we can determine the required plastic modulus from the provided equation. By replacing the numerical values, we find the required plastic modulus to be 2812 cubic centimeters. Based on the provided data, we have selected a suitable universal beam with dimensions of 533 millimeters by 210 millimeters and a weight of 122 kilograms per meter, along with a plastic modulus of 3200 cubic centimeters. Now, let's ensure that the selected beam can withstand the shear forces involved. The maximum shear force, which is equal to 11 divided by 16 times the point load, corresponds to the maximum reaction force. By substituting the values, we find that the maximum reaction force, denoted as Ra, is 516 kilonewtons. To verify the shear stress, we divide the average shear stress by the thickness of the beam. In this particular case, we have a universal beam with dimensions d equals 544.6 millimeters and the thickness of 12.8 millimeters. After calculations, we find that the average shear stress is 74 newtons per square millimeter, which is well below the permissible limit of 159 newtons per square millimeter, ensuring the structural integrity. And there you have it. We explored the fascinating world of statically determinate and indeterminate structures, learned about their analysis methods, and witnessed the design process of a propped cantilever beam. Understanding the behavior of structures is crucial in designing safe and efficient buildings. Whether it's a simple beam or a complex curved shell, analyzing these structures with the right tools and techniques ensures structural integrity. We hope you enjoyed today's video and found it informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our future content. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.